نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد نمبر ون إسلامك هستري أم المؤمنين حضرة حفصة رضي الله عنها Hazrat Hafsa radiyallahu anha was the daughter of Hazrat Umar radiyallahu anhu and the true sister of Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu. She was born five years before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced his prophethood. She was first married to Hazrat Khunas bin Hudhafa radiyallahu anhu who was fatally wounded in the Battle of Badr and then passed away a while later. It was after this that she was married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Hafsa radiyallahu anha was a woman of great virtue, about whom Ibn Sa'ad rahmatullahi alayhi wrote that she fasted all day and engaged in ibadah all night. This was a practice which she maintained until the day she passed away. She had a great aversion for conflict and always feared the advent of the Dajjal. She possessed profound knowledge of Quran, Hadith and Fiqh. The books of a Hadith quote 60 Hadith from her which she narrated from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from Hazrat Umar radiyallahu anhu. She passed away during the Khilafah of Hazrat Mu'awiyah radiyallahu anhu in Medina in Sha'ban 45 AH. The governor of Medina Marwan led the Janaza Salah and she was buried in Jannatul Baqi. Number two, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's miracle, curing a sick child. A woman once brought her extremely weak and ill child to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, O oh Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is now getting older, but look at him. Make dua that Allah takes him away. No, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I shall rather make dua that Allah cures him, restores his youth, makes him a person who carries out good deeds, who will fight in the path of Allah be martyred and then be admitted into Jannah. As a result of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's dua, the child was cured, his youth restored, he carried out good deeds, fought in the path of Allah, was martyred and then admitted into Jannah. Bayhaqi 2431 Number 3. A Fard Performing Salah in the Masjid Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Muslim who makes the masjid his abode for performing salah and engaging in zikr, Allah becomes as happy with him as a person becomes happy with a family member who has returned home. Ibn Majah, Hadith 800 from Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Number 4. A Sunnah. The Dua for Protection from Jahannam. The following Dua should be recited to secure safety from Jahannam. ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار Translation O oh, our Rabb, we certainly have Iman, a prerequisite for forgiveness. So forgive our sins and save us from punishment of the fire of Jahannam. Surah Al Imran verse 16 Number 5 an important act and its virtue, securing forgiveness through two raka'a salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When a person commits a sin and then performs wudu, performs salah and begs Allah for forgiveness, Allah will certainly forgive him. Tirmizi, Hadith 406 from Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Number six, a sin, denying miracles. Allah says in the Quran, when their Rusul brought the clear signs worldly to them, they became arrogant on account of the mundane knowledge they had, and that which they mocked Allah's punishment enveloped them. Surah Mu'min, verse 83. Number 7. 
this world, the oceans as a means of sustenance for people. Allah says in the Quran, it is he who subjugated the ocean, placed it at your service, so that you may eat fresh meat, fish from it, and extract jewels, pearls, that you wear as jewelry. You see the ships cleaving their way on it, the ocean, so that by traveling on sea, you may seek business from his bounty, and so that you may show gratitude to him for this great bounty. Surah Nahl, verse 14. Number 8. The Akhirah. All of creation fear the advent of Qiyamah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There is not an angel, sky, land, wind, mountain or ocean that does not fear Fridays because it will be on a Friday that Qiyamah will take place. Ibn Majah, Hadith 1084 from Hazrat Abu Lubaba radiallahu anhu. Number 9. Cures from the Quran and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The black seed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Kalanji, the black seed, is a cure for all ailments besides death. Muslim hadith 5768 from Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Number 10. Advice from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Set prisoners of war free, feed the poor, and visit the ill. Bukhari, Hadith 3046, from Hazrat Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, wa salamun alimursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.